pretty nervous though, still really shaken, um, just to know that it could happen at any time. And today, the shakes will continue along with the cleanup. Lisa, have any figures started to come in about the number of insurance claims yet? Yes, Simon, we've managed to get some quite early figures from the Earthquake Commission and what they've said is that they've already had 2,700 2, claims. That sounds high enough, but, but the most concerning aspect of that is that 350 of those claims are houses that people consider uninhabitable. And so that means for, for centres like this, it seems as if they're going to be needed in the city for quite some time yet. At the Linwood Welfare Centre. Lisa Davies, thank you very much. We also need to update the number to call for assistance. Now, this is the correct number 0800 77997. 0800 77997. Disregard all other numbers. So, once more time 0800 77997. And the earthquake situation seems far from over here. Dozens of large aftershocks have been experienced overnight. Most of them have been centred south of Darfield, the epicentre of yesterday's early morning quake. The largest at 5.20 a.m. was 5.1 on the Richter scale and certainly gave us all a jolt, waking those up who weren't already awake. There's also been an update from the District Health Board on the two men seriously injured in yesterday's quake. One man in his 50s who was hit by masonry from a toppling chimney remains in a critical condition in Christchurch Hospital. The other man, also in his 50s, who was seriously hurt by broken glass, is described as stable. Fire crews and search and rescue teams resumed their operations at first light. Christchurch Mayor Bob Parker surveyed the scene this morning from the air. Substantial damage is reported in rural areas, including Darfield and Hororata. Civil Defence estimates that more than 500 buildings sustained substantial damage. While there's been damage to some minor bridges, major bridges have withstood the quake. Some roads have been closed due to minor damage or flooding. The Prime Minister is in Auckland after surveying the damage here in Canterbury yesterday afternoon. He says the whole of New Zealand is rallying to help the region spread destruction. Well, next thing is making sure that Christchurch has all the support that it needs. Um, and there's some practicalities that need to flow from yesterday's disaster. Uh, the Earthquake and, uh, Commission is going to send uh, a number of engineers down. They're going to set up a regional office to help support Christchurch homeowners who want to make claims. Uh, we haven't sent up to 100,000 homeowners will be looking to make claims, but it could be more, uh, in excess of a billion dollars worth of claims against the Commission. So this is a big job. We also need to make sure that support is in place for the incoming weather, because we are understand that they're likely to be hit in Christchurch by very strong winds and very wet conditions. Uh, and while we only saw around about 250 people in welfare centres last night, an awful lot of people went out and stayed with family and friends. We just need to make sure that all those support services are there. And obviously we're working as fast as we can to get water back on. Power's largely been restored. Uh, wastewater's also presenting some issues for us. Now you were of course down there yesterday on the ground. Can you describe what you saw, what it was like? Well it's utter devastation really. It's hard to explain but you're the, the inner city, which is always a vibrant and busy place, was completely deserted. Uh, there were these you know, scenes of, of um, buildings on fire, um, facades of buildings just completely collapsed, cars um, totally smashed, and a sort of eerie sort of sense there of uh, what had occurred some hours earlier. Um, so it was, it was quite a frightening experience actually, and, and you knew it was very serious because of course all of these buildings which, you know, hours earlier had been operating as uh, you know, the sort of magical part of, of Canterbury, all of a sudden had condemned or no go written all over them. So there was a, you knew you were in the scene of something which had been quite devastating. And just talking to people on the street, um, people were going out to see, to see and survey the damage themselves, but they were obviously very shaken and frightened and there were a lot of children out with their parents and it was time for people to reflect on how serious this could have been if it happened a few hours earlier and that seems to be quite blessed that they hadn't. Are you surprised at just how lucky we've been in terms of, you know, no, no deaths, but a couple of serious injuries, but could have been so much worse. Oh, look, it had been taking place five hours earlier or five hours later, there's no question there would have been substantial loss of life. Um, this is a very busy part of Christchurch where the main damage took place and it happened instantly when these building facades collapsed. So in, in that sense, um, that was the one good news bit of the story. So a huge damage bill expected in excess, as you say, uh, of a billion dollars. How do we cover that? Yeah, well, it's a billion dollars just for the Earthquake Commission and maybe more alone. Uh, but you've got to remember, then there'll be private insurers on top of that. Then there's uh, local government, there's businesses, uh, there's the Crown contribution in numbers that have been banded around the order of two billion. But look, no one really knows. And a lot of the issues uh, won't present themselves immediately on day one. And even the superficial damage we can see, I saw a church completely broken and half 
but there'll be damage underground that will be very, very substantial and quite expensive to fix. The government's just forked out quite a lot of money for the, the South Canterbury finance bailout. Can we afford this extra huge cost? Um, we can. Um, you've got to put it all in the context of a country which has an economy that's, you know, $180 billion. So, um, yes, we can, and we prepare for this. And, in fact, the Earthquake um, Commission and the Earthquake Fund is one of the largest funds in the world, and it's well-established you know, in the way that it operates. So it shows that we've thought this, this sort of process through, and that, that's a good news part of the story. And as you say, the great irony of all this, of course, is there'll be a lot of stimulus as we rebuild Christchurch and the surrounding areas. How long could this rebuilding of Christchurch take? Oh, it's at least a year. I mean, it's not a short-term thing, and it's going to take some weeks, I think, to actually present those issues. Some people better clean up relatively quickly. But you think about the demands on builders, um, you've got very large work, but you've also got a lot of small work. It'll be the, the red plaster and something, it'll be taking some tiles and replacing those, it'll be some plumbing work around the house. So I imagine this will be um, part of what will be ongoing work in Christchurch for the big part of the next 12 months, if not longer. What kind of response have you had from leaders overseas to what's happened? Well, Julia Gillard rang me yesterday and David Cameron um, sent me a text overnight. I know the Governor General has been approached by quite a number of leaders from around the world, uh, people in his position, saying, look, whatever we can do to help. So there has been definitely both an outpouring of support, and I think it'll be financial support also going into that mayoral fund. So that'll be of some relief to people. And um, it's been great to see organisations. I mean, the ANZ yesterday committed to a million dollars. Um, those kind of numbers will get chewed up very quickly when you look at the magnitude of the issue, but it's nice to see our neighbours and our friends come to the support of New Zealand in that time.